hello hello good people and welcome to my youtube channel let's do life with niche where i give you unique entertaining and informative content now today i'm here at ongatarongai in kajiado north constituency and i'm here in a certain school which we are meeting a teacher here and he's going to tell us what they offer and what kind of school it is welcome Let's meet Mr. Washington here to tell us what he does and what goes on here. Welcome. Okay, my name is Washington Musungu. I'm a teacher here and, a dean, and the Dean of Students. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I, I'm also the head of curriculum. I ensure that uh, the syllabus is covered within time and also the examinations are carried in due course. Okay, Mr. Washington, what kind of a school, let me call it a school, what kind of a school it, it, it you have here okay the school is called matrix algebra and it is under the department of non-formal education non-formal education was introduced by the government to bridge the gap uh, given that uh, in the 1990s 1980s even the 2000s there were young people who would drop out of school and would not complete their academics in time. So some of these people would come maybe to Nairobi or other urban centers mm -hmm. to settle and maybe find an opportunity maybe to go back to school after maybe uh, earning a little bit of revenue. Mm -hmm. So non-formal education was introduced to help these people achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. And that's how we established Matrix. Uh, the school was established back in 2009 as a tuition center okay. and then in 2010 it sat for its first case CSE, and uh, and we had about 40 students and most of them were adults okay. yeah. uh, at the time the school was not registered so we were doing our examinations in gong or in nairobi in other schools okay yeah so can you tell us the kind of students you have, like uh, the age, do you have the, a primary school and uh, a secondary school? Yeah. In order to cover the syllabus very well, we realized that if we chose secondary alone, we would be missing out on students who did not make it to uh, primary school. So we decided to have a primary section and a secondary section. In order to cover, to bridge the gap, we decided to have a primary section and a secondary section. The primary section takes students who are aged between, I mean, from 15 to any age, even if it's 60. Okay. The secondary section is also taking students who are above the age of 15, okay. because this is not a conventional school. It is a non-conventional school as given by the Ministry of Education. Okay. Yeah. Now, how do you get your students, like, how do you source them? They just come or your school is in, maybe in, in the med social media, or how do you get them? Okay, we have tried different levels of advertisement. Mm -hmm. We use billboards, which we have, or I mean, posters, which we hang around in on Ongatarongai, mm -hmm. and they respond very well. Then there's also the word of mouth. Someone who has achieved well here, they recommend their friends to come here. Mm -hmm. We have also done social media advertising among other avenues however most of the time you find people are always looking for a place to go and study and they'll always ask a friend that i need an institution where i can complete my studies that's how most of the students come to learn about the institution okay. are you in partnership with the church no we are not in partnership with the, with the church the church is the landlord so we are tenants here and we are offering this i mean we are independent as an institution how many students like right now how many students do you have or in the past years okay the height of the school was in 2015 and 2016 where we recorded the highest number of students if you recall very well 2015 and 2016 had high levels of uh, if I might say maybe school dropout and expulsions from school because of indiscipline cases. Mm -hmm. So you'll find such like students, their parents will want them to continue with their studies. So they would refer them here. And then again, it was the time when uh, people were learning about the, I mean, people had known about the institution here. So we recorded around uh, 200 students and we had about 120 candidates that year. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, 
how many okay let me say uh, for the primary uh, section how old is the oldest the oldest we have ever recorded here, here was about 60 years 60 old. years yeah mm -hmm. uh, he came here he studied and apparently he continued and completed their secondary school most of some of the students we recruit here for primary section they finish up they go back home for business because they don't want to be in school for the entire four years then after four years i mean after two years they come back and cover because our syllabus is rapid rapidly covered we choose uh, we have a team of dynamic teachers who work fast to ensure that the students can cover the the, the syllabus in the shortest time possible so we have capped the minimum number of years for students to stay here to two years two. the maximum being three years okay uh, now how is the performance like let's say for the oldest how do they perform in fact we were surprised we used to think that the younger people would perform better than the older people however it seems that whenever you have realized the dream that you want to pursue in life you work hard for that dream so you find that older people can even outperform younger people who join this institution mm -hmm. and that's why we have recorded the, the the people we have recorded who have gone to the university are people who are even above the age of 30. okay yeah now uh let me say for the let me go back kidongo now uh for the people who come like let's say for the primary section what are the challenges they faced or what they what made them not to finish their school, not go on with their school? Now, that's a very broad question, but I'll try to shorten it as much as I can. There are various reasons that make maybe people not to finish primary section. I'll start with the 1990s. The 1990s education, as much as it was free, it was not that way free. You could find people who came from poor family, a mother or a father raising something like uh, 300 shillings for the school development fund or whatever it was called at the time was very hard. Uh, so some of these students will drop out because of that. Then remember also the 1990s saw an upsurge in HIV and AIDS in infection whereby many children were left orphaned. Most of these people could not find opportunities to join school. Some came to Nairobi, they became street children, others came and started and joined the informal employment famously known as Mujengo yeah. and so on and so forth. Some even joined the after they had gotten to 18 they became security officers, I mean say security guards. Yeah. So such are the people who despite the challenges they had had in life, they realized that it's potentially important for them to have uh, this certificate. So they come back to the institution. Uh, others are students who, for some reason or the other, they were rude at school, they couldn't concentrate in school because of one reason and the other, or the other. But after the hardships of life, they decide, let me go back and behave myself so that I can achieve this certificate. Okay. So those are the majority of the people we get mm -hmm. in primary section. And what about uh, teenage mothers? Teenage mothers, uh, looking at teenage mothers, these are people who are young, yes, and some of them cannot really even fend for their children. So there are hard, few who can get an organization to sponsor, to sponsor them to school, make it to come to places like this. However, if you look at the pool of mothers who come here, most of them are usually maybe those people who got married off when they were young. And then maybe their husbands have realized that it, it is important for them maybe to study so that maybe they can raise children very well. So those are the ones that we get. However, from 2019, I can point out, remember 2019, 2020 saw an increase in teenage mothers. Mm -hmm. We have started seeing such kind of young people coming to an institution like this. Do they join the primary section or the secondary section? Most teenage mothers join the secondary section because it's past uh, maybe in class eight when such kids get uh, pregnant and maybe they do the examination then they come and join uh, in, in secondary school. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, now let's say the KCC and the, KC, the KCP, you do them here? Or yeah. you, you go to other schools? This is a registered center under the Kenya National Examination Council. So our examinations, except for the primary section, mm -hmm. where we record few numbers, so we can't get the quorum to have a center. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 
second is the one that will get the quorum and that's why the center is here it's a fully established institution the building behind me is the building that we use for the examination okay yeah okay Can you tell us uh, like, uh, how many hours do this learning go in a day? Okay, our learning is just like a normal school. We start our school at a, around at 8.30 and then we go up to 4 p.m. Our classes are divided into one hour sessions with uh, two breaks. That's for the normal class. However, we have people who work during the day and they cannot find the hour, uh, the time to come. So they come in in the evening for the evening classes. Okay. Evening classes, we have four hours. It starts at five and ends at eight, okay. 8 p.m. Uh, at night. So we have those two sessions. The first session is in the morning session, which we cover from eight to four in the evening. However, for the primary section, because the subjects are few, we cover from Eight in the morning, I mean, from nine in the morning to one p.m. Now, uh, because uh, the students you have mostly maybe their mothers, maybe others are uh, house girls now. What challenges do you face? Like, do they manage to come to classes every day? That's the biggest challenge we face. You find that, uh, you know, with the Nairobi situation and with the current economic crisis you find that most of the students who are here some of them are house help so they're given limited time by their employers to be here so you'll find a student who comes for example she or she, she he or she is in form four but she's coming only for about the morning sessions so she has to cover the remaining part of the afternoon by herself mm -hmm. to see what the students did when she was away mm -hmm. and so on and so forth mm -hmm. others are young mothers so when the child is sick they might fail to come to school or they might come to school randomly there are people who even report here for at two because the entire morning she had to take the kid to clinic uh, so those are some of the challenges so maybe she's in school then she's called that the kid is not feeling well so it's a one of the things that we are supposed to struggle around with however we have we decided to have what you might call a dynamic syllabus coverage whereby if a student who is challenged in situations like i'm talking about they can have even a saturday or even a sunday session with the malimu and then the teacher will try and help them cover the section that they find hard to cover by themselves wow that is that is very nice Clinton, through the introduction of cbc by the government how are you dealing with it for now we are still well covered because we know that we still have the secondary section so we still have like uh, for primary we have, we have two years because you have the current class seven we're going to class eight next year and then for the secondary section we still have four years to figure out however the government has requested a uh, people in the non-formal education to try and figure out where they can fit in with the new syllabus. So once we get acquainted to what the government is offering, we can know how we can handle the cases because remember, we still have people who dropped out of class eight. We still have people who are dropping out of school right now. We still have people who are facing different challenges and these people will still want to cover their syllabus. So such like people are the people now we are trying to develop uh, a policy that we can present to the Minister of Education on how we can also induct them into the competence-based curriculum which is now in full gear. However, given that you see we cover a short period of time, it means that we will have to wait in for for the CBS to be fully implemented to see where we can fit. Because you see, for primary section, we don't go eight years, yeah. like the normal schools. For primary section, we go a minimum of two years and a maximum of four years, depending on where the student dropped out. We have never gotten a case, apart from maybe immigrants who come into Kenya, whereby they are supposed to start fresh from primary school, so, uh, from class one. Most of the ones who come here dropped maybe in class four, in class five, which means that they have four to i mean two to four years to cover the syllabus and then they can do the kcp but uh, does the school like 
run like a normal school, like the the terms, the midterms, terms, and all stuff. We 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 run like a normal school. However, in order to cover the syllabus, you see, we covered it during in the shortest time possible. We try as much time as much as we can so that we can extend during the holidays. The only challenge that we faced was when there were changes in 2016 that uh, completely banned tuition. Uh, so we were forced uh, to follow and uh, conduct ourselves like normal secondary schools, which put a toll on our syllabus. It's one of the major challenges that we were confronted with, uh, given that, you know, the more the time you have in school, the more the students can cover and the more you can have plenty of time to revise. So we faced a lot of challenge with the government completely and strictly stopped the running of tuition uh, because we did not have a letter that can say that, oh, gee, those guys can, can continue with the studies as, since yeah. they are running a parallel uh, kind of uh, education. Yeah. But how is the performance so far? The performance is individual best. Uh, we cannot say it is uh, overall we are among the not so well performing schools uh, be, given that we have two categories of registration here. The first category are students who decide to register then they stay in school and study. So this is like makes up about 20 to 30 percent of the students who are in schools. Then you have those people who decide we will only register and come to do the case here. Exactly. So this makes the bulk of the students who register. So if you have, for example, 100 students and 70 have registered and are not in school, so you find that the perform overall performance is not good. However, for those who come to school, if we aggregate, we can say we comfortably get a D plus or a C minus in overall. Then the top students we have ever, students we have ever had had a B play. Wow. Yeah. And now, do you have enough teachers for the every subject, or you maybe one teacher teaches like uh, two subjects, which is good at all? How do you do it? Okay, generally, according to the education uh, policy, a teacher at secondary school must teach at least two subjects. Uh, I mean, at most two subjects. There's the major and the minor when they go to the university. So here we have seven teachers. Mm -hmm. We have 10 subjects. So some of those teachers have overlapping. For example, we have three mathematics teachers. We have three science teachers. So you find that a teacher has at least two, two subjects to teach. We don't uh, heap a lot of subjects on one teacher. We don't have a super duper teacher who can maybe teach five subjects. So what we do is we have maximized on the number of staff so that we can offer quality education. We don't want someone who drops out of school, I mean, who finishes secondary school and then say that, ah, I can OG, I can teach geography, I can teach mathematics. No. The teachers we have, we have tried to nurture them so that they can be professional as far as they, they, they can get. So we encourage the teacher to have a min I mean a maximum of two subjects okay. yeah uh -huh. that we are the teachers who are here are not like while we have a we have a permanent staff okay or maybe you can tell us more about the teachers yeah, the teachers that we have here are permanent staff some of them have been here since their school started in 2010. A few joined on the way and they have been here for more than six years. So we have, we can say we have a consistency or we are lucky to have a consistency of the students being assured that they'll be taught by the same teacher when they open the school. We are not like a kind of institution whereby you find when the new term comes, we have new teachers who will also take over the students for one term, then they go back to the university. No, we don't have that case. Okay. Now, what what motivates the school, like maybe you, what motivates you to be doing this each year, each year, each year, like what is their, what do you want to achieve maybe in the community and in our society? Uh, okay, we work together with the, the the government and one of the goals of the government is to eradicate illiteracy mm. so that by maybe 2030 we have almost zero percent illiteracy in the country yeah. and 
one of the motivating factor is that we are proud that we are part of that team that is trying to eradicate illiteracy and we are also proud that we are part of that team that is reigniting the dreams that so many people had thought that they they could never achieve you find somebody who is in their 30s coming here and saying that we would want to achieve this i would want to go back and maybe achieve my goal of being a doctor a teacher an accountant so when you can when you make such a person's dream come true you always feel satisfied that you've at least done something so our motivating factor is to ensure that as much as we are here we are also impacting the society and we have seen that see for the past 20, 10 years that we've been in this institution that we have impacted positively on many lives since we started here we have had uh, around 3000 students and 60% of those are in a better place than when they came here okay. uh, so that's one of the things that we are proud of and what we are aiming to achieve further oh that is that is a very nice one now if i can go back uh, about the fees now if maybe there are people who watching this and then they want to join maybe they want to join the school or maybe me i can just go out there and give the word about the school about you can join the school at any time what about the school fees okay we struggle a lot with that because you see everything in kenya is getting expensive however we have tried as much as we can to make sure that our school fees does not move beyond 10000 per term so that at least we can capture the house help who is working for maybe 5000 per month uh, to come and join this institution and we always allow for someone who is challenged to pay to have a flexible payment there was a case of a student who joined this institution in if i remember very well 2013 and he did his uh, case you see in 2015 the student never paid a single penny for the three years he was here but we were training him when he completed and he got a job we allowed him we gave him, him a number where he would be depositing the amount of money that he gets per month in a span of two years he had completed his school fees and he came and picked up his paper so what we are trying to do is we are trying to tell people that education isn't that expensive if you learn the dynamics and the rigors of getting this education so what we do is we try to keep our school fees as low as possible and encourage flexible payment of the school fees so that at least you don't say that i didn't go to school because i didn't have the amount of money if you come and explain your case and your case can be believable you will find that you will study and if you are a committed person you will settle the school fees before you are you receive your certificates that's how we allow we navigate through the school fees Mm. but now again the like let's say in the case of house helps mm. sometimes maybe tomorrow she might not, might not even attend class one week you are not seen her what, what what steps do you take okay we tried to we have tried to reach various people for house help the, the most uh, devastating thing is that you find uh, maybe she loses the confidence of her employer and maybe she's fired and then you're like where did this lady go and she was doing well in school we have tried we have been trying to reach out to people who can come in and help how we have not been successful in that avenue so that's why sometimes you find dropouts are even experienced in an institution like this uh, however we there was one also another case of a house help who lost her job and then she came and explained it to us and then there was a lady who volunteered to stay with her as she continued so what we did is we waived her school fees for the period that was remaining so that she can complete her education yeah. so if someone can come and explain her situation there is no way uh, our principal silas will turn them down and say that ah we can't accommodate you because you can't pay school fees silas is a very understanding kind kind of a person who will listen to your case and if your case is genuine then we will find a way in which we can navigate through that because you even have good will people uh, and in fact the lady who took her in was a soldier here uh, who said that I can stay with her because I live alone in my house I can host her yeah. and then there were two fellow students who said that uh, we can provide uh, food for her if the the lady who had hosted her is incapable of so you see people can even step in when they find a genuine and serious situation which can be helped and the student achieves whatever goals they have to achieve
So we don't just let them go. If we can reach out to them, and that's why we tell them always to write their number on the admission form. If we can reach out to them, we can help. Uh, and we're still looking for maybe partners and people of goodwill who can maybe step in and say that uh, if you have such like case, just reach out to us and give us clear details we can help. Uh, those are some of the people we are, we are, and that's why maybe you didn't find the principal in the office today. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is very informative. In fact, I always know about this school because my church is just right there at the corner, so sometimes I just pass there. Yeah. But I never knew, like, uh, for the many years I've been <laughs> here, I didn't know much about the school. I uh, just at an adult school. Yeah. That is very nice. Now, Mr. Washington, maybe you can tell us, you talk to someone out there who wants to join school because he left out because of many reasons. Uh, what can you tell them? Okay, P for people who dropped out of school and uh, are thinking or rethinking about joining school, remember, if you are doing 844, you have a winter period of about six years from today, I mean, five years from today. If you don't join this soonest you want to be you will be cut out and you'll be forced to join the cbc curriculum if you want to join the school matrix is there for you we also have other branches even in kericho which are doing very well and we still we always encourage people even we attend barazas and churches to tell people that this thing is real join school come back my encouragement is that you can never say that i gave out i gave up on my dreams dreams never die Dreams can always be rekindled at a, at a suitable time. I've seen people who have come here and they have changed their lives. There was a secretary who came here who had just finished her class, who did her class eight in 1990s and then went to secretarial. She joined this institution, she got a seaplane, went to Nazarene University, got her degree. Right now she has a master's. So if you have a dream to pursue, you don't have to say that... Uh, I never see an, a, a chance. There is always a chance, and we our, our doors are always open. We pick, we take people even from as far as Nairobi who come and study here so that they can achieve their goals. So never give up on your dream. Never say that the time has run out. People become successful at a different age. There are those who become successful instantly. At the age of 20, they are successful. We have seen people who have made it in life even at the age of 60, yeah. and they have become billionaires. So if you want just to keep on that fire burning, this is the chance, and this is the institution that can help you do that. Thank you so much, Mr. Washington, for what you're doing in, with the school. Now people you have had, there are so many people who are impacting the society in a positive way. And please, if you have that something, if you have that something in you which tells you like you have to help in, in a certain way, please come, let's do it. Like now they are doing, they are bridging the gap of education in our society. They are doing a very good job. Thank you so much for watching us and please like and subscribe to our channel as we learn more.